day. I tell you, this is, uh, this is different. This is totally different. But I, I tell you, I could not be more uh, excited this morning to just at least be able to do what we're doing right now. It's been a long several weeks, and uh, it's still going to take some adjustment. And from week to week, we'll just have to kind of rediscover and, and maneuver and, tr and kind of uh, uh, figure out our plan. But uh, I do want to uh, tell you, it is so difficult. Uh, to not shake your hands or to not hug your neck. That's the hardest part of this, I tell you, truly. Uh, it's just who we are and what we do. And, and there's even people uh, Im implied that perhaps shaking hands and stuff would become a thing of the past. Even our president suggested that might be the case. It won't happen. I, I can't see it ever happening. Uh, but uh, I, I hate that part of it. Ladies, we, uh, this is your day, Mother's Day. Uh, we welcome you. We want you to feel it. We want you to enjoy your day. And fellas, let's roll out the red carpet for them. I do want to mention uh, for prayer, uh, Susan Mahurin, uh, we've been uh, made you aware of that through our text alerts, but her cancer has come back, uh, lung cancer. And so uh, uh, that's something that she's, uh, of course, battled one time in the past. We're going to keep praying. We're going to try to help uh, keep her lifted up to the Lord and help her get through that. So please pray for she, uh, Susan. Outside of that, uh, the hospitals are clear at the moment, and that's been good. Uh, we uh, also want to take time to recognize, not, not by name necessarily this morning, but uh, our graduating seniors. Man, it's been, that's another thing I feel so badly for our seniors, high school seniors, uh, because they have not had the normal spring and enjoying the various things involved with graduating from high school. But we do have a number of seniors, a couple of them, Kess and Ty are here this morning. But we're going to, so you'll know, we're going to have a senior night, a Sunday night service for the seniors. <laughs> and, uh, and so what we need you to do, parents, is to start uh, getting those photos together, a number of photos that you can bring of your graduate and get those to Cooper and Bergen. If, if it, or if you come at a service that Cooper and Bergen's not here, then get them on, on my desk or David's desk. And Cooper wanted to let us let you know that we need those and, and pretty 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 soon. Okay. And so if you'll work on that, uh, we would uh, we would appreciate that, folks. We're not going to be taking up an offering today because of the passing of the plate. Uh, we're trying to avoid that. So if you want to leave an offering, the plates will be set in the back. In fact, Jerry, if you'll put a couple of those plates on that table as well, back in the foyer uh, as well. And so you can drop those there, and uh, we'll do it that way. Okay, so glad you're here this morning. Let's, uh, Stacy. I want to ask you to stand, if you will, and open us up in a word of prayer, please.
be seated. We'll have a word of prayer together. Father, we're thankful to be in your house this morning, and we're grateful, Lord, that uh, we can call upon your name. And Father, we've been doing this from week to week. We've been praying and calling upon your name, of course, and we've been worshiping, and we've been reading your word and praying and uh, this sort of thing. But Father, uh, it's good to be able to get back together and, 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 and assemble. And we just thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you protected our people. Uh, had just one of our people caught this virus, Lord God, and, and she recovered well, and we praise you for that. Lord, we understand that some others have been less fortunate. We understand that some others have lost loved ones. Many, many across the nation have lost loved ones. It's been a tragic, it's been a, a, a sad situation. But Father, we can praise you and we can give you thanks for what you've done and what you continue to do. Father, probably the worst impact on our country right now, more so than the health issue, is, Father, the people who are hurting financially, the, the jobless, uh, those that have been uh, confined to their home and still confined to their home, perhaps, and lonely, isolated, fearful. Uh, Father, just pray, God, that this morning that they would be perhaps watching this service or another preaching service and that they would be encouraged by the Word of God. Father, we ask that if for the next few moments, if you'll help us to honor our mothers, we thank you for each and every lady in our life. We thank you, Lord God, for uh, blessing us with a good Mother's Day already. And we ask, Father, that as we uh, honor our mothers, that we can also honor you with the things that are said and done. We do lift up uh, 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 Susan Mahirin to you, Father, this morning. Encourage her. Uh, we know, Lord, that Foy also is going through difficulties with his cancer and I, I, I lift him up to you as well. And Father, Lord, in the next few moments we pray that your Holy Spirit would lead, that you'd speak to our hearts and we pray this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you'll turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1 and I'll say ladies that I am very thankful for each and every one of you this morning. All of the women in this church are important. Uh, we would not be what we are as a church without you. You've got to know that. Uh, some of you may not know, but it's doubtful that this church would have kept its doors open at certain times in the history of Bible Baptist if it had not been some very, for uh, some very faithful women, uh, some faithful ladies who would not let their pastor or their Lord down. And I'm not talking about the years that I've been here. I'm talking about years way back uh, when things were sparse at times. Uh, with Brother Summer pastoring here, and the ladies were faithful. There were men, but there were more ladies back then than men, and they stayed the course, and we are what we are today because of the women of our church. I thank God this morning for my wife. I thank God for my mother, my daughter. Uh, God's given me two great daughter-in-laws, uh, Emily and Bergen. I'm thankful for my only one granddaughter. I am thankful for all the ladies that are special to my life. And I know that each of you fellas could say the same about the ladies in your life. And I want you uh, to know, ladies, that this is your day uh, and uh, we want it to be special for you. But our society uh, is rapidly changing. We have, there was a time in our past where uh, men knew who they were. Women knew who they were. Each one embraced and carried out the roles that, 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 that God had given them. But it's not the case anymore. We have uh, a lot of changes. There are more and more people trying to determine their own gender. Um, there are more and more people that are confused. They call gender confusion. Uh, men are trying to be women, and women are trying to be men, and, and, and some are even what they call are trying to be gender neutral. They don't want to claim any gender one way or the other. It's just whichever one was most, is most convenient at the time. I suppose if you're going to the public restroom, uh, whichever one's got the shortest line is what gender you are that day, okay? But I don't want to spend our time on this Mother's Day this morning focusing on all of that foolish, foolishness, but rather I want to focus on the reason that every woman, every girl, every young lady should be thankful for 
being a female. They should be thankful. You should be thankful that God made you a woman. You didn't just happen to be a female by chance. Upon conception, God didn't just flip a coin and you had a 50-50 chance of going one way or the other, but it was God's choice that you're a woman today. It was by God's design. He had a plan for you as you were developing in the womb, and He has a plan for you as you walk this earth today. He made you a lady that's special. And I want you to know, note this, ladies. God didn't make you inferior to anyone. He didn't, certainly didn't make you inferior uh, to man. He didn't intend for you to be second rate in any way. He just made you different than a man. And so you need to love you as God made you. You need to love the person that God made. And, and <clears throat> maybe I can help you this morning to be encouraged. Maybe I can help you to be reassured of God's hand on your life. Maybe I can help you own, if you will, your role as a female in a greater way as we move forward. Now, first of all, I, I want you to know that God doesn't have accidents. You need to understand that. You're a woman on purpose. And the sooner you realize this, the sooner you will find fulfillment in your life, whether it be a man or whether it be a woman, any person who struggles with their gender, it, any person who does not have that issue settled is going to be a person that lives in conflict. Regardless of the smile that people may put on their face, if they don't have their gender nailed down, if they're confused, there's going to be internal unrest. There's going to be a battle going on on the inside. There's going to be apprehension about their purpose and their role in life. There's going to be a, a confliction, if you will, about their identity. And it doesn't have to be that way because the issue can be settled because the issue is already settled. Whatever God made you, own it. It's already been settled by God. It just needs to be settled in the heart and the mind of each and every person. Now, I know this morning I'm speaking mostly to ladies. I say mostly, probably exclusively to ladies who already have this nailed down. You don't have an issue. Most of you, probably not likely any of you, have an issue about your gender. Uh, it, it, it's, not, it's not something that's a struggle for you. You're here and you know who you are. You embrace the fact that you're a woman, and I praise God for that. But what I'm about to share with you perhaps can still be a reinforcement of your identity and encouragement for you. At the same time. And so we're going, we're in Genesis chapter 1. And of course we know this is the Bible's account of creation. We know God made it all. He, he, he created the whole outfit in six days. But I want to run through several scriptures with you as we do this. And I want you to notice something very interesting. We're going to start in verse 4. The first half of the verse, it says, God saw the light that it was good. And then we go down to verse 10. And God called the dry land earth, and He gathered together of the waters called the seas. And God saw that it was good. Verse 12. And the, and the earth brought forth grass, and the herb uh, yielding seed after, it, a seed after its kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after His kind. Watch this. And God saw that it was good. Let's go down to verse 18. I'm going to paraphrase for just a moment. It says, And God divided the night from the day and divided the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. Verse 21, if you will, And God created the great whales and every uh, living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Verse 25, And God said, Let us make man in our own image, after the likeness, uh, after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea. Now, that's the wrong verse. Verse 25, I knew that didn't sound right. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw 
that it was good. You see, God created these things, and then He gives His approval. He says, I made light, that's good. I made the oceans, that's good. I made the trees, that's good. And so on and so forth. He just simply said, it's all good. And then He sums it up in verse 31, if you'll notice. And God saw everything that He made. The whole outfit. And He said, behold, it is very good. He said, it's very good. See, God was pleased with His creation. And He's given uh, very positive reviews, if you will, on, 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 on what He had just done. Seven times He said, it is good. So now let's move over to chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. And I want you to notice verse 18. And the Lord God says, it is not good. Now, wait a minute. It's been good all along. And all of a sudden, it changes. His, his whole tone changes. Now there's a problem. God said it is not good. This is the only negative note that you find in all of creation. <coughs> and what does it pertain to? Rest of verse 18. And God said it is not good that man should be alone and I will make him a helpmate for him. God says the absence of a woman is not good. Amen. Ladies, if that doesn't make you feel special this morning, I don't know what will. God says the only thing I have a problem with in this whole deal is there's not a woman. There's not a lady. God made you to fill a void. God made you to complete what would otherwise be incomplete. I'm incomplete without Tricia. Bible Baptist is incomplete without you ladies. Children are incomplete without their mama. Grandchildren are incomplete without their grandmas. Hospitals are incomplete without the lady nurses. Homes are incomplete without the woman. Schools are incomplete without, uh, uh, with, without lady teachers. You ever watch Andy Taylor? Where would Andy and Opie be without Aunt B? <laughs> I've seen a couple of episodes where Aunt B was out of town. It wasn't good. <laughs> I mean, we're incomplete. We, even, we need a woman. The world is incomplete without you ladies. It's not good without you. Verse 21 of our text in chapter 2. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon man, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs, and he closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto man. Now I want you to notice, he says, made he a woman. That word made, I'm not trying to get fancy here, there's something to learn from this, is a Hebrew word that means to build. In other words, he built him a woman. Now, if you go back in, in uh, chapter uh, 1 of Genesis, verse 26, you don't have to go there. You can look later. But when God says, let us make a man, he used a different Hebrew word that just simply means to bring forth. And so he said, essentially what's being said, is bring forth a man. Of course, he created him. I don't know the exact details of the process. But with a woman, he says, let's build a woman. Now, what does that tell you? When God made a woman, it was custom work. God says, I'm going to make them just right. Eve was custom made for Adam. God didn't give Eve big muscles because Adam already had muscles. He didn't give Eve high levels of testosterone. Adam already had an abundance of testosterone. What Adam needed was a soft woman who could make him feel like the man that testosterone was already telling him he was. God says, I just need to make a, uh, somebody soft for Adam. Eve was custom made. God designed her just right for Adam. God has custom made you, ladies. 
He didn't just throw a bunch of DNA into a pot and stir it and just see what comes out with each spoonful. He made you you. Now, unfortunately, we're all born with a sin nature, so the you that God made can be taken in the wrong direction and can behave in ways that, that God never intended. But when God carried out, uh, his, when He designed you, if you can carry out the plan that He has for your life, it's going to be fulfilling, it's going to be purposeful. And I believe it goes a step further. I truly believe that God designs a specific woman for a specific man. Without question, Tristia was custom made for me. I didn't, there, there have been people that along the way have said, I'm surprised you didn't marry a country girl. I didn't need somebody that cussed like I did, folks. <laughs> I didn't need somebody that could rope better than I did. I needed someone, this old ruffian that God already knew, this old ruffian needs someone who is polished. He needs someone who is clean. He needs someone who's organized. He needs someone that's got some sense. He needs someone who's tender. Uh, he needs a lady. He designed her for me. I didn't need someone to share my snuff with. I needed someone that says, spit that stuff out. For 33 years, God has used this custom-made woman to make me better. Amen. Ladies, God has designed you with a purpose. Your custom work. And I don't mean just as a wife. I don't want you to think, well, God just made me to be a wife. That's all I was designed. No, no, no. God custom made you for many areas of life. He custom made you for certain jobs. He custom made you for, for areas of parenting that the man can't do. He custom made you for certain ministries, certain relationships, certain roles of leadership. I want, to look, I want you to look at it this way. Cooper, as many of you know, builds houses, builds homes. He, he, he works for Dan Wilson Homes. And there's two kinds of houses uh, that they build. They build spec homes and they build custom homes. Spec homes are built a certain way speculating that when they're finished, someone will come along and buy them and make it their own home. But the spec homes are not built with a great many specifics for that particular buyer because they don't even know who the particular buyer is going to be. And so they're built more general. But a custom home, which is what they specialize in, they're built with specifics in the design that, that uh, the future owner, the person that having it custom made, wants and needs. The home is made to fit the person and the family that's about to move into it. Why do I say all that? God doesn't build. He's not a spec builder. He's a custom builder. All of you are specifically designed. God just doesn't put people together in hopes that somewhere along the way that He'll find a person for them or somewhere along the way He'll find a purpose for them. God custom makes us. He puts certain talents, certain gifts, certain temperaments, certain personalities and characteristics about us with a purpose in mind. So be encouraged today, ladies. You're special. Amen. You're not a spec house. You're a custom house. Amen. Remember that song, Brick House? <laughs> He's a brick house. Well, you're a custom house. Something else I want you to notice in verse 21 that is unique about a woman, verse 21 and verse 22. It says, And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and he closed up the flesh thereof, instead, uh, flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto man. He made her from a rib. Man's rib. Now, if you were to look back on verse 7, won't take time to read it, you know the story, but he brought forth man from the dust. It all makes perfect sense to me these days. That's why I'm so stinking dirty all the time. God, you know what, folks, can you ever know? She's never. I can get to smelling like a goat. 
She never smells bad, ever. She, and and, and, and it's it just God made all, the woman from a rib. He made us from the dust. Our bed, and I, fellas, I hope you can relate to this. I hope it's not just me. But our bed is like it's divided in two, beauty and the beast. Uh, one side of the bed, the sheets are, on her side of the bed, the sheets are just so white. And on my side of the bed, they're dirty. They're like two-tone sheets. No matter how much I shower, no matter how many times she changes the sheets, there's just a, there's a, there's a tent to my side of the bed. And I clean them once a week. And she cleans them once a week, by the way, <laughs> just if you're guessing. And I dirty them once a night. It's, it's, but in, 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 and she gets up in the morning and the bed looks like a, on her side the covers just barely moved like and nobody ever slept there. In my side it looks like a meteorite landed there. It's, it's sunk in. <laughs> it's like a tornado hit. You see, we're totally different. See, God made it. It was a whole different process when he was making us. Men are made from dust and women. The woman was made from the man's rib. And, and I'm not trying to read into this. I'm just saying, you know what that speaks to me about? You're a part of us, ladies. You're a part of who we are. Without you, we're not fully who we're supposed to be. We can live without a rib, but we can't live without you. I can finish her sentences. And she can finish mine. She can glance at me in a crowd and I know what she's thinking and vice versa. I've had 21 years here as a pastor watching some of you couples carry out your lives together. You think the same. You laugh at the same things. You share the same values, the same sense of humor. You enjoy the same things. You're a part of each other. And it's the same with the kids. That's why the Bible speaks of kids being the seed of the woman. If you're fortunate enough to grow up with a mom present throughout your upbringing, she's always going to be a part of you. Many young men will marry ladies that are similar to their mom. Many young ladies are a, 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 a small version of their moms. This In this church, Ladies, you're a part of us. It wouldn't be the same without you. It's, you're, you're a part of who Bible Baptist is. It's like peanut butter and jelly. It's like cake and ice cream. It's like iced tea and snuff. <laughs> it just goes hand in hand. If you've been involved around Bible Baptist for very long, and most of you have, You'll recognize how things flow after a meal in Summer Hall or after Vacation Bible School, if you're here in August when we do that. Everyone just flies into action. The men are stacking chairs and, and breaking down tables and the, the ladies are wiping down tables and, and they look like red ants crawling all over the kitchen and cleaning up and, and doing their thing and it's all very smooth. It's like a hand in a glove. It's all just the right fit and it's really amazing. It's a process that plays out in a matter of, of, of minutes. But it's because y'all are a part of who we are and we're a part of who you are. We're connected. You can't have one without the other. Let me close with this, and I want this, I'm directing this towards men. I want you to notice something in verse 22 that, that I never noticed this before until I got up here and was studying this, this, uh, this message. Notice what it says, verse 22, And the rib which the Lord God ta had taken from man made he a woman and brought her Unto the man. That sounds like a gift, doesn't it? Amen. He brought her, God, remember, He custom made her. He put the things in her that He wanted and that He knew that man would need. He just designed her a certain, certain way. It wasn't spec work. It was, it was custom work. And then He says here, Adam, He brought her to Adam. It's a gift. Men, the women, are a gift. 
And you say, well, yeah, I thought about giving them back. <laughs> now, that being the case, I understand, but she's a gift nonetheless. Not too long ago, my oldest grandson, most of you, all of you know Baylor, he brought me a cross necklace that he had made. And he said, here, G-Pa, I made this for you. His mom does silver work, and, and she's really good at it, but she's teaching him, and so he made this cross necklace. Now, folks, I'm not really a necklace kind of guy, but I quickly became one. Because Baylor gave that to me. And, and I've had it on ever since. And, and boring uh, losing it or something like that, I'll probably wear it from here on out. But here's what the point I want to make. I love this cross necklace, not only because Baylor gave it to me, but because Baylor made it. Amen. He made it. I want every man, boy, Male child who might be listening to me, if you have a mama, if you have a wife, you have a grandmother, even if you have a sister, she's a gift. Amen. They're gifts to you. You got to know that they're very special. They're custom made. There's a special design to each one of them. It's complicated at times, yes. It's a complicated design. Men are pretty simple design. But women, complicated design, but it's a gift designed just for us. Amen. Be thankful. Be appreciative. I'll call my mom after church, and I, I, I'll be glad to talk with her. I talk to her very regular. Be thankful for your mom. Be thankful for your wife. And let me leave you with this thought, ladies. Don't ever regret being a female. It's not a man's world, like the song may sing, say. It's a world created for man and woman. And God made you who you are. And if you're struggling with your identity and your purpose, just remember, God had a plan when he was forming you. It didn't happen by accident. He didn't just throw you together in the womb. He designed you to be you. So accept how you look. Accept how you're built. Accept your intellectual capabilities. Accept your personality. Accept you as God made you. Because you are in fact a gift. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Father, I pray this morning that <clears throat> somehow I've encouraged these ladies to recognize how special they are. Father, we know that you have a plan for each and every one of them. Some of these ladies have been through so much. Some of these ladies are young and some of them are old. Some of them have been through a whole lot and some of them are just getting started. But we can be sure of this, Father, you are with them and you have a design for their life and a plan for their life. And I pray, Lord God, they'll walk out of here this morning with a special appreciation for themselves and what you've made them to be. And Father, let us men, us fellas, walk out these doors with an understanding that a woman is never to be looked down upon because she's a woman. That she's never to be talked down to because we can. Father, that she should never be taken for granted. And Father, let us walk out of here recognizing that you gave these ladies to us as a gift. Whether it be sister, mother, grandmother, wife, Whatever the case may be, help us to be thankful. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. What we're going to do, if you feel comfortable this morning doing it, I challenge you or encourage you to gather here at this altar this morning. It's been a long time. Don't feel comfortable. Don't do that. We're going to stand. We're going to take just a few moments and have a verse of invitation. And if God's spoken to your heart,
You're not going to be looking around. Heads are going to be bowed, and, and folks will be tending to their own business. But if God's spoken to your heart, you come this morning. Oh, to Jesus, I Day and I hope that uh, I hope that you fellows will roll out the red carpet for them, take good care of them, and uh, we're going to be dismissed in just a moment in a word of prayer. Let me just tell you that uh, uh, this morning uh, the changes that we made, we're having two services, and kind of, we're just testing the waters to see what we have, or what we're going to be able to work with. It's likely, looking at these numbers, uh, probably 11 o'clock service will be this bigger, bigger, and so it's likely that's going to relate to uh, having to have two services next week. After that, there's, I think the governor will open up further and we'll probably be able to get right back to one service, hopefully. Uh, next week we'll also start, uh, begin having our Sunday night services again. And so just bear with us, we're testing the waters. We'll likely try to next week to have uh, a nursery of some kind. It's probably gonna be maybe, depending on how many children come, maybe spread out over a couple of different rooms. Uh, so we don't have little babies, it just again, and I want to just tell you, I, I feel comfortable with everything we're doing, but I have to make decisions uh, and be conscientious of how other people feel or what their concerns are. And so if you say, well, this is a bunch of overkill, well, I, I'm really just trying to have a good balance here, guys, and so uh, just, just bear with us from week to week. Hopefully it'll be in a few short weeks and we'll be right back to it. I can't wait for Wednesday night. I can't wait to get the kids back here on Wednesday night. I've missed that so much. So uh, thank you for being here this morning. Happy Mother's Day, and let's go ahead and be dismissed in a word of prayer. Blake, uh, Copeland, will you dismiss us, please?